Hello friends, welcome to BMH Learning. We are doing vectors and this video will deal with yeast artificial chromosome. So yeast artificial chromosome is a genetically engineered chromosome derived from the DNA of yeast Scheromyces cerevisiae. So what do we do with this manipulated DNA of yeast? We ligate it into a bacterial plasmid. But we already have plasmid vector. So why doing this all modification work and investing more time? It's because they provide the largest insert capacity of any cloning system, up to 1000 KBs. So we can say yeast artificial chromosome is essentially a PBR322 plasmid into which a number of yeast genes have been inserted. Let's get into the structure of plasmid yeast artificial chromosome vector. Because a plasmid is having a yeast chromosome inserted into it, it must be possessing unique sequences of a chromosome. So the first element is the centromere. This is required for the chromosome to be distributed correctly to the daughter cells during cell division. The second is two telomeric sequences which are needed in order for the ants to be replicated correctly. Another one is an autonomous replication sequence or ARS. AR sequences are thought to act as replication origins. These are required for replication and preservation of yeast artificial chromosome in yeast cells. Then we have various selectable markers which allow for differential selection of the transformed colonies. These include URA3 gene which codes for orotodin 5 phosphate decarboxylase. It's an enzyme involved in the biosynthesis of the pyrimidine nucleotides. Next selectable marker is TRP1. This gene is involved in tryptophan biosynthesis. And this is located adjacent to a chromosomal origin of replication. Apart from these, the vectors also has many restriction enzyme sites so that it can be cleaved for DNA insert. Now let's talk about how DNA is cloned using plasmid YAG3 vector. So the vector is first restricted with a combination of BAMH1 and SNAB1. This treatment cuts the molecule into three fragments. One of these fragments is useless for us. And that fragment is this, which is flanked by BAMH1 at both sides. So we are going to discard it. Then we are left with two arms, each bounded by one TEL sequence and one SNAP1 site. Now, the SNAP1 is a blunt and cutter, so a blunt and a DNA is ligated between the two arms, producing the artificial chromosome. After this, protoplast transformation technique is used to introduce the artificial chromosome into Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This was all. Thanks for watching.